Frank Pastore, and welcome to More Than Conquerors. My guest hosts, AC Green and Leah O'Brien Amico. And today, gang, we get to talk about baseball. <laughs> Chuck Obrimsky, great hero of mine, and also Tim Salmon, the greatest hitter in the Los Angeles yeah. of Angels of Anaheim, or whatever their name is. Uh, greatest career, you know, their greatest history. But we get to talk about baseball today. And we also get to learn a little bit about Frank over here, who, you know, that past couple shows, AC and myself, we've been able to talk about our careers. But we get to talk about a little bit about you and uh, learn about your, your baseball background yourself. You were 17 years old when you were drafted by the Cincinnati Reds. And in 1979, you were the youngest player in the National League. Well, Frank, see, I have to ask a question. I mean, I, I really need to know this. <laughs> here it comes. I know. You're a All teenager. Right. Yes. Okay. You're playing on the big red machine. Yes. Since Cincinnati Reds, the height of baseball at that particular time, what yeah. a machine it was. 50,000 people every night you guys are playing. It was packed. Okay. There you are in the bullpen, and you're, you're looking out on the field, two icons out there. Behind the plate, Johnny Bench. On the mound, Tom Seaver. The phone rings, your name gets called, and now you're walking out there, and I want to know what is going through your uh, mind as uh, a teenager. It was unbelievable. All right, so first of all, uh, at that time, the, my most comfortable place was literally on the field. Because the minor leagues, I mean, we've seen all the baseball movies, are nothing compared to the real thing. Mm -hmm. And so when you get to the actual show place, to the Cadillac, to the showtime, to the big leagues, uh, it's very big leaguey. And so we had five Hall of Famers on this team. And, uh, you know, Tony Perez and Joe Morgan. Wow. And Pete, Pete had been there in the spring training, but he was gone. And, and so an incredible team. And my boyhood idols, no kidding, were Tom Seaver and Johnny Bench. So opening day, 1979, I relieve Tom Seaver, and I'm pitching to Johnny Bench. Oh and it was, it was against the San Francisco Giants. And I remember I, my first pitch was to a, a utility player named Billy North. I threw a strike. I struck him out on a 3-2 fastball. And I thought, well, this is easy. You know, I've struck out every player I've ever faced in my entire history. And, uh, but anyway, I, from there, uh, went on. Uh, being young, being young was a huge, huge difference than it is today. Back then, mm. rookies were seen and not heard. I mean, yeah. you didn't burp without permission. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, but today, uh, with the money and everything else, it's very, very different. And it's very hard to be rooted and centered and live out the Christian life on, on, a, on a Major League Baseball team. You know, our season's a lot longer than your guys. Yeah. Right? How long was your season? Yeah, our season was just about three months. Yeah, and, see, and no. Yeah, 60-some games. Yeah, yeah, no, ours is 162, plus wow. all of the spring training. And so, and I didn't become a Christian until very much later in life. I was challenged to disprove the Bible. I was hanging out by, with mm -hmm. the Christians on the team. And essentially, my wife, Gina, uh -huh. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Gina yeah. said, this is great. My wife, Gina, when we made the big leagues, she went through the rooming list, right? And so she goes, <laughs> she goes, no, no, okay, okay, no, no. And I go, like, let's roll a ball. And it plays, obviously, it's such a role in your life. life. But I also want to know, what was it about that book that only changed your way of thinking, but also that made you want to leave your own dugout in the middle of a game and go down and read the book in the weight room? Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. I wanna... See, it's amazing how you knew that. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, gosh, in a nutshell, I thought Christianity was false. Okay. I thought it was for losers. I mean, back in high school, if uh, you were one of the Christians, it means you didn't get dates. Uh, you didn't go to the dances. You weren't on any sports teams. All you could do was, quote, get into religion. And they were mm. all the dopers that used to get loaded out in the bands and during the high school dances and stuff. Right. And they, quote, got Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah. And then they come back on campus to tell you why you should be exactly like them. And they were losers. That's and right. so I grew up your classic American secularist. I believed life was a pain and then you die. Evolution is true. And he who dies with the most toys wins. That was mm. it. So I thought my quickest way to, to fame and fortune and glory was through throwing stuff hard. And so that's all I could do. I couldn't, I couldn't dribble. I still can't dribble, all right? I could never hit 500 like you did in college, but I could throw stuff hard. And so I was fortunate enough to make the big leagues. C.S. Lewis, briefly, I didn't know there were answers to legitimate questions about Christianity. I'd never met an intelligent Christian in my life until I met C.S. Lewis. Wow. I thought it was an oxymoron. You're either one or the other, you know what I mean? Uh, but I found out there were answers. And so for people who have questions on, uh, about Christianity, where did the Bible come from, and why does God allow evil, and those kind of questions, there are answers if you just Absolutely. make an effort to actually find the answers. Yeah. Tim Salmon is one of the greatest baseball players in the history of Southern California sports. He's problem good. Is, problem is, with all of that fame and glory, Christ remained number one, but he never played for an all-star team. 
but he's got an incredible life and incredible testimony to who Jesus Christ is. Let's watch Timmy Salmon.